welcome to Treasury Notes, a show dedicated to the latest news and information from the office of West Virginia State Treasurer John Perdue. I'm your host, Gina Joins. Since first taking office in 1997, State Treasurer John Perdue has made financial education one of his top priorities. Those efforts have led to a nationally award-winning financial education initiative in West Virginia schools called Net Worth. But children aren't the only ones with financial education options available to them. Treasurer Purdue has a series of money conferences, which include his Women in Money and High School and Money events. Now, for the second year, the Treasurer's Office has joined with AARP and several other federal, state, and local agencies to help host Money Smart Week West Virginia. Money Smart Week is a public awareness campaign designed to help consumers better manage their personal budgets. This year's event in West Virginia ran consecutively with the other Money Smart Weeks around the nation. The highlight of the week included a day-long financial literacy and education summit. Here's more from that event. Benjamin Franklin helped kick off Money Smart Week West Virginia 2011. It's a collaborative effort to make sure people around West Virginia are making smart decisions about money. In its second year, several events were offered around the state to help educate consumers. That included an event at the Marriott Town Center in Charleston, where hundreds of people took advantage of free seminars designed to help them better manage their personal finances. The West Virginia State Treasurer's Office was one of several partner organizations for the event. In fact, many people took advantage of State Treasurer John Perdue's unclaimed property display by participating in an interactive search for their lost money or belongings. The week also included a statewide financial literacy essay contest for middle school students. Students had to answer several questions based on the scenario that their family faces a financial emergency because one of their parents lost a job. Gary Middle School student Victoria Sullivan of Roan County won the grand prize of $500 invested into a smart 529 college savings account. Winners in each category took home money invested into smart 529 accounts and certificates signed by West Virginia State Treasurer John Perdue. For more information on Money Smart Week West Virginia, log on to wvtreasury.com. And as I said earlier, Money Smart Week is just one of the many financial education initiatives from the State Treasurer's Office. Here to talk more about some of the other opportunities available is Assistant State Treasurer Danny Ellis. Mr. Ellis, thank you so much for joining us here yeah, today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Money Smart Week West Virginia is, again, like we said, just one of the many initiatives that the Treasurer has been a part of. Why do you think these are so important, particularly the adult financial education aspect? Gina, having, having known Treasurer John Perdue for a good number of years, and, and especially in the last year you know, that I've joined the Treasurer's office, uh, I've, uh, I've had many occasions to talk to the treasurer about the programs that he has within the treasurer's office, but you won't talk to him long until you find out that he has a real passion for education, but not only for teaching and learning. Uh, you know, numerous times I've heard him say that, you know, it, it, it's never too early to start saving, and, it, and it's never too late to learn new things in life. You know, I know out at some of the conference, especially the Women and, and, and Money Conference, and also... Uh, in the various parts of the state, he has uh, he talks to a lot of the groups, uh, especially some of the uh, some of the elderly about budgeting, being good stewards with their money, about investing, and you know this is something that uh, I found in my own personal life and knowing people around in my community and and having opportunities to talk to people about budgeting their money. Uh, I've had people tell me, I, I don't know how to budget. You know, mm -hmm. I don't budget, sure. and, and you know, and, and I guess it, it's kind of a, it's a unique thing to some people, but earlier today I was having a discussion about how simple, but you know, how, how complicated it can be at times really to, to sit down and, and put things in a perspective, put, put your finances in a perspective, sure. Sure. and uh, you know, 
oftentimes than not, or more often, I guess, than, than not, it's a matter of, of, of discipline also. And the treasurer and I have talked about this. Uh, some people, you know, maybe don't have the discipline with their finances that they need to have. But I think with some of the programs that he has, this is part of the, part of the, the programming, part of the teaching that he is, is also involved in there. But the, the discipline yourself to be a, a good, good steward with your finances. You talked a little bit about the Women in Money conferences, and I know Treasurer Purdue really does take that responsibility to heart to help educate the public about personal financial education. Um, he started the Women in Money series back in 2002 uh, at the Charleston Civic Center, had some great success, and now we've done uh, almost 30 of these conferences around the state. That is something that I think he's very proud of. What's some of the feedback you get about these conferences that are put on around the state? Well, last year, actually, I got to be a part of, you know, of the Money Smart Week. And uh, I, was, I was really surprised at people that, that came up to me afterwards. And, you know, that was, that was really free and open about discussing their finances and some of the programs that the uh, treasurer's office had available. And uh, we get a lot of positive feedback. You know, we get, I get things through emails and, and actually through personal conversations conversations with people and, and, and I'm really surprised at the interest and the interest that the treasurer has generated throughout this state with these programs. And these days a lot of issues are out there for people to be concerned about. It's not just about their budget their, and budgeting their personal accounts, but also people have questions about fraud and they have questions about retirement. They come to us a lot of times for advice with these questions. Absolutely. You know, you, you, you touch so many people's lives. I know the treasurer, uh, you know, as I've said earlier, this is something that I know that he's very passionate about. Uh, he's always open, you know, to discussion, not only with me, but, you know, traveling with him throughout the state, you know, I've had the opportunity to be a part of conversations with him, and he's always eager to tell people about the programs that he has with the treasurer's office and what we have to offer, and certainly good advice that he has to offer these people. The treasurer is also very involved in financial education at the ground level, and when I say that, I mean kindergarten through 12th grade. He started the Net Worth Initiative back in 2008. It's now very rapidly growing, and it's a strong program for the treasurer's office, I think. Um, just uh, want to point out to our viewers that the program was a finalist for the Council of State Government Innovations Award. It also received the National Eiffel Award for Excellence in Financial Education Literacy. Those are um, some great things that we can boast now that this net worth program has been nationally recognized on several several different levels. Um, I also wanted to just talk to you a little bit about how this program has progressed and how it has flourished over the last couple of years. You know, as you pointed out earlier, back you know when the program first started in the infancy of the program, so to speak, I have you know personally witnessed and you know through having been able to attend I, I know at least one of the programs on, on the uh, went to one of the programs here in, in the uh, one of the local schools and, and really I, I could tell the kids were really excited uh, you know and, and I've kind of laughed different times I said, I've told people I said I couldn't tell who was the most excited the treasurer about being there or the kids actually getting to take part in some of the net worth programs and 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 again you know this is something that that I know that the treasurer has been deeply, deeply involved in, and I know that he's deeply interested in. And and I get a, again, I get a lot of personal emails from teachers. I get emails from principals throughout the state. You know, some of the ones maybe that I have not had the opportunity at this time. They really want to start getting involved in some of the programs at the schools and part start incorporating this into some of their curriculum. And, and you know, it's just something that I think people are pretty excited about throughout this state. How are teachers receiving this program? Because I know when you talk about teachers getting new materials to put into their classroom, sometimes there's some he hesitation. But I think we've found that with the Net Worth program, it's really integrating the curriculum in, or integrating, I guess, right. the lesson plans into curriculum that they already have. Uh, you know, teachers have got a very difficult job. And, and you know, but I, I found that the ones that I have got to talk to, 
haven't seen a lot of reluctance. You know, it seems like they're pretty excited about involving and getting this incorporated into their curriculum. It's, it's something that the kids, I don't care if it's from the, the kindergarten level right on up, this is something that they're going to carry with them the rest of their life, you know, teaching kids about that personal responsibility with their finances. And, and you know, you and I both know that, that we think back over our lives and people that have influenced us have been teachers. And, you know, what an ideal place and what an ideal spot, you know, to have something like this because this is things the kids are going to remember. And these are the people, you know, our teachers and our system, like I said, I know they're excited about it. And the ones that haven't participated, I really believe they want their opportunity at it. And we also get the community of, involved. You talked a little bit about going out to some of these events under the Net Worth program. One of those events is the Get a Life simulation. It's a budget simulation, but really it's, it's more of a game that these students get a card with a, a, basically their salary that they have, and they have to go around and figure out their monthly budget. What is that experience like for those students to go through that? I mean, it's some of them I've heard just will come up and say, I didn't realize mom and dad had to do all yeah. this. It, it's, it's probably as close as we can get as actually, you know, simulating real life events. You know, like you said, you know, basically the kids are given a job. They're given choices to make as to what type of automobile you may want to buy, what type of insurance levels you want to buy. You know, it just takes you basically from, from the ground right on up, you know, you know, I guess whether you want to live in an apartment, whether you want to buy you a house. You know, it, it's like I said, it's as probably as close as you can get to real life events and, and, and for kids. It, 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 it's an eye open experience for a lot of them. And I know many of our viewers have seen the video. We've um, showcased the Get a Life event several times on this program, but it's such a joy to watch. It really is. You know, it really is. And, and again, that's something that I have gotten a lot of feedback from. Yes. Uh, you know, people that, who have actually participated, uh, you know, from your, your community people, some of your bankers mm -hmm. and, and folks, your professionals out in the community that have participated in the, in the Get a Life, you know, from your teachers, your principals. I think it's something that they really, really enjoy. Let's uh, really stay with the educational theme here and talk a little bit about the Smart 529 College Savings Program. Again, this is something that the treasurer spearheaded for the state. It's a program where people of any age can go in and start saving for higher education. Talk uh, just a little bit about this program and what it means to the treasurer's office. You know, it, it's, as I stated earlier, you know the treasurer said it's, it's never too early yeah. to start saving, you know, for your kids' future. Sure. Your grandkids, your, your nephews, your nieces, you know, whoever you want to open up one of these plans with the 529 plan. This is something that, that the, the treasurer, again, has, has brought into the treasurer's office. And, um, you know, right now I think we just topped the $1.5 billion in assets that we manage, you know, for the some few odd thousands of people, you know, who, who, who actually are participants in this program. And, and, you know, just thinking back over our own life, uh, I don't recall things like this when I was growing up, you know, that you had really had that opportunity to put money aside for your kids and for your grandkids. And, and you know, what a jump start it gives, you know, our kids toward their college educations. And it used to be years ago, you know, maybe it was optional or whether we wanted to go on to college or not. But, but you know, nowadays, you know, kids, the treasurer does a tremendous job of encouraging the young ones, you know, to be sure to get your education, you know, whether it's through your four-year colleges or universities or, or whether it's out in a vocational, it's in a trade school, but continue on with that education. And I think this has provided that the golden opportunity, you know, for us as parents and grandparents to, to be able to put aside a few dollars every month, you know, to make sure that that child has that opportunity to move forward in life and, and, and give them the best advantage that you possibly can. With anything, signing up is usually the hardest part of the process. One, just getting over that hurdle of saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take today 
and I'm going to do this. Sometimes that's the hard part. Uh, it's really an easy process, though, right? Absolutely. You know, we have uh, we have people right out on the front lines that are going to be there, will and, and more than able to help you get your kids signed up and basically go over some of the programs. You know, where you want to invest your money. Uh, we have those experts and, and people that are ready and willing to to step out and and help you get get these kids signed up. Only takes fifty dollars to start a Smart Five Twenty Nine account. No minimum contribution after that of course people are encouraged to participate and, and put as much back as they can there's also some tax incentives there are some too. tax incentives there too for people who want to to invest in that program and, and again you know this is something that the treasurer has been very passionate about and and uh, you know it, it, it's something that he has really promoted and, and and very proud of we are getting ready to have our fourth annual when I grow up essay contest the winners um, are going to be announced at a banquet very soon. The number of children participating this year actually doubled from last year, and that is something that is so exciting for the treasurer, all the field representatives who work so hard to go out there and, and make sure that students are participating in this contest, and a lot of the teachers, too. Talk a little bit about why you think this contest is catching on. Well, you know, it, it, it's something that, uh, you know, it's been one of the programs that the treasurer has, has, has certainly put these marketing skills toward and uh, you know it gives the kids an opportunity I think to 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 really just pin their dreams you know this is what I want to be this is what I aspire to be when I grow up this is what I want to be and and, and you know I, I think there's a challenge there involved to them also you know as well as you know an opportunity to be one of the winning participants and, and an opportunity to to receive a little you know some cash rewards there too that you put towards your college and uh, and also I, I think he changed the time schedule and when this uh, when the, the the program is taking place so I think more kids are starting to take advantage of it and and it's certainly being well promoted throughout the schools and throughout the state Absolutely, and the nice part is, as you said, um, when these students go out, they write their essays, the winners actually get money toward their Smart 529 college savings That's plans. Right. And for some students, that may be just the jolt they need to, well, you know, to I, start I, saving. I, I think most kids, you know, it, Certainly, I, I'm around, you know, kids I, being involved in Little League programs over the years and, and, and bas elementary basketball. Most kids are going to step up to the challenge when you put it in front of them. All right. You know, to, to just have that opportunity to say, yeah, I don't mind to write down to you and tell you what I want to be when I grow up. Another interesting point is that teachers this year were involved in the essay contest. They could write an essay as well and get $100 cash if they won towards school supplies, and really they could use that money for their classroom. That, that is correct, and I think you've seen the numbers in that jump this year. Sure. Maybe what, around 89, 90 people who some of the teachers were involved in that at this time. So that it's you know, it, it's just been a it's been phenomenal. You know what's happened with the program. Yeah, it's a very exciting program, and I know the treasurer is very proud of it. Right now, we're going to take a short break, but when we return, we will have more about Treasurer Purdue's West Virginia Retirement Plus program. We'll also continue our discussion with Assistant State Treasurer Danny Ellis. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We find all kinds of items, and that becomes unclean property, and it mounts into millions of dollars. It could be stock, it could be CDs, but it could also be a diamond ring or a gold watch of your dad's. We returned over $50 million to the people of West Virginia. I'm proud of that. You can go on our website, you can look at the names and see if your name's on there or someone that you recognize. We set the standards in the nation in returning unclaimed property Welcome back to Treasury Notes, a show brought to you by the Office of West Virginia State Treasurer, John Perdue. I'm your host, Gina Joins. The Treasurer's Office took over the state's deferred compensation plan back in 2006. Since then, the West Virginia Retirement Plus program has doubled the number of participants and increased assets by 50%. In an effort to continue reaching out to public employees around the state, Treasurer Purdue hosted an informational seminar to educate the benefit and payroll coordinators who help explain the plan to employees. Here's more on that meeting. It takes people like you to explain to your employees and your, your co-workers 
how important the 457 plan is. State Treasurer John Perdue says signing up for the state's 457 deferred compensation plan is an easy and smart choice. And he's hoping these government administrators and benefit coordinators will make sure his message is heard. Recently, dozens of people from participating agencies attended a seminar to learn how the West Virginia Retirement Plus program works for its members. The benefit coordinators used this information to explain the 457 plan to new hires. Also, they often answer questions about the program. I'm very proud of what we've accomplished in that program. I hope you're proud of what we've accomplished. And we want your ideas. Feel free to call us. And let us know what your ideas are. Attendees say the West Virginia Retirement Plus is a great tool for their employees. With the economy today, I just think it prepares people to be more responsible. Yes. And you know, they might have something to look forward to you know, when they do retire, and it won't be so hard on them. West Virginia State Treasurer John Purdue's office administers the plan at no cost, and partner ING Financial provides investment and record keeping services. Log on to WV457.com to find out more about this valuable supplemental retirement program. And I'm joined once again by Assistant State Treasurer Danny Ellis to talk more about the Retirement Plus program. Uh, we just saw how the Treasurer spoke to benefit coordinators from around the state. He, he's talking to them to really explain a little bit more about what the 457 is. Why is it so important that they understand this plan? Well, you know, the, the, the folks there, the benefits coordinators, as, as well as, uh, you know, our own uh, Deputy Treasurer John Fisher has done a tremendous job in, with educating uh, some of the coordinators without in, within the government ranks. Uh, actually, you know, that, that's where I first become acquainted with this program several years ago. Uh, I was the uh, chief financial officer and business manager for the Department of Transportation and you know once a year we always invited the treasurer's office to come and be a part of the program and believe it or not th this this became really one of the one of the cornerstones of, of the uh, of the finance uh, seminar that we had and this was this was something that uh, it, it gave you know John an opportunity to come out and 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 basically talk to several hundred people in one setting and some of these people were the benefits coordinators you know that were there not only from transportation but also from some of the other agencies that came there to be a part and and, and these are the people that we have to depend on you know a, a lot of the times that to, to get the message out and get the right and proper message out about the 457 program and again I think they've done a, done a tremendous job doing that as you've seen earlier you know the treasurer was there talking to several of the benefits coordinators and, and um, you know again this has been a been a, a great uh, asset for us to have these people out there that can that can take the program for us and carry it on to their employees. And they're really the first line of defense when people have questions. Who are they going to go to? They usually go to their benefits coordinator or their payroll coordinator right for, right off the bat. That is correct. And and again, you know, I, I think John has done a tremendous job of educating. You know, the the the, the uh, benefits coordinators. Uh, you know, they they can all give you the very you know more than the basics of the programs. You know, they can uh, you know they can tell you the the 25, 26 different options that's available and, and basically answer any and all the questions that all the the, uh, the potential investors have in this program. This program has had some pretty impressive growth over the years since it's been under the treasurer's office. Um, assets that amount to more than ninety million dollars I think and I think there's over eleven thousand participants right now that number keeps going up. That's exciting news for us here at the treasurer's office but it's also exciting news uh, for the state because it means that we have people who are looking toward their future. They are investing in their future. Why do you think this is such an important message to get well, across? You know, so to speak, it, it gives, it gives you know, people like myself, you know, who, who I, I'm, you know, I have a 457 program, or I'm involved in the 457 program, as well as several other thousand employees in, you know, in and around the state. But, you know, it gives you the opportunity to kind of control your own destiny to a, to a great degree. Uh, you know, this is a good supplement to your retirement. And again, you were talking about the impressive growth in the program. As of yesterday, uh, you know, in, a, in the most recent conversation I had with, uh, with John, with, with the uh, John Fisher, 
I think our assets were up to around $114 million wow. with a goal of, of uh, the employees jumping from 11200 and we're hoping to have at least 12000 That's the goal for this year. So it's, it's a pretty impressive goal. It's a pretty lofty goal, but, but I know that they work very hard and very capable of meeting that goal. And we do have a matching program. Uh, people still have a little bit of time left to cash in on that matching program. That is correct. Uh, I think there was a three-year program that was made available, uh, you know, through the initiatives of the, of the treasurer, uh, you know, and working with the legislature. Uh, you know, if you're a new participant, uh, you were you could have gained another hundred dollars basically by contributing as little as I believe it's seventeen dollars a pay period for twenty-four pay periods, which brought you to around four hundred and eight dollars, and that gave you the maximum amount. So you were eligible to get the hundred-dollar uh, addition. Yeah, if your organization, if if you work for the state or if your organization participates in the 457, now's really the time to get involved since this is the last time you may be able to cash in on that. That is correct. Money. And, and, and uh, you know, right now we're, we're a little bit uncertain of the status, whether the $100 addition is going to carry on for the next three years. But, uh, you know, again, right now I'm not equipped to give you that answer. So hopefully, you know, it may continue. It may not. Before we go today, I do want to touch a little bit on our unclaimed property program very quickly. The unclaimed property program is, is something that we go out and we find these people, we make sure that their money is going back into their own pockets. It's really an impressive program and I think West Virginia, I feel I can say, has really been a leader around the nation in its unclaimed property program. Talk a little bit about well, that. Well, you know, you're absolutely correct. You know, West Virginia has been one of the leaders in, in the, uh, you know, trying to get money back to the to the rightful owners. And, and uh, again, this is something that I think the treasurer has taken the initiative to promote this throughout the state. And again, you know, just from a personal experience, I, I never will forget. Uh, you know, some years ago, I wasn't, you know, real, real, wasn't real astute, you know, as far as to what the unclaimed property was, where it came from. But I'll never forget when I first saw one of the pamphlets that came out, you know, one of the that the treasurer puts out. But once, you know, when you discover what it is, one of the first things you think, boy, let me see if I've got anything. Well, unfortunately, I didn't, you know. But but there was a great number of people in there that I knew. You know, right in my community, you know, you go start looking for names of people that you know, and certainly, you know, you think, well, my golly, do, do, do they know that? Do they know that they have some unclaimed property? You know, so I, I think this has been this this again. This has been something that that has been outstanding that the treasurer office has, has promoted, and, and again, he's over a hundred million dollars that he's returned back to the people of West Virginia. And of course, the, we have field representatives who go out and deliver this money a lot of times. And, and you know, I guess we can't say enough about the efforts of our local government specials, our LGS. Uh, you know, the, as you say, these, these people are our first line of defense. Uh, you know, they've made a lot of things happen out there for us. They've made a lot of things happen for the treasurer's office. They make a lot of contacts out there for the treasurer's office, not only for individuals, not only unclaimed properties, but also, you know, working with the 457 program and, you know, working with the, with the 529, opening doors for us with with uh, with municipalities, you know your 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 small cities, your counties, your county commissions. These guys have done a tremendous job. All right, Mr. Ellis, thank you so much for joining us here today. Our time is up, but we appreciate you coming on the show as thank always. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank well, you. Well, that wraps up today's show. Remember, you can always get the latest news, information, and events from the state treasurer's office on our website. It's wvtreasury.com. Thanks again to Assistant State Treasurer Danny Ellis, and thanks to the staff here at the West Virginia Library Commission. Keeping you informed on the Library Television Network, I'm Gina Joins with the Office of West Virginia State Treasurer John Perdue.